Arnaldo Flores. Buenas noches a todos los presentes y los al frente. Eh, sí, vivo por 22 años en Sonisai, me tengo que mudar porque el ando vendido el apartamento, sigo muy cumplida, el no renta estabilizada, ahora estoy buscando un estudio, un, eh, un cuarto eh, de un dormitorio, todo vale más de 1.500 dólares, se me va casi el 70% de mi sueldo. Eh, los invito a que ustedes vivan un día de nuestra experiencia, de nuestra vida, para que vean cómo se tenemos que hacer nosotros día a día. Muchas gracias. Uh, uh, good evening. I want to say I've lived in Sunnyside. I lived, I lived in Sunnyside for 22 years, but the building was sold to a new owner, so I had to leave. And I'm currently looking for a place to live. I'm looking for a studio or one bedroom apartment, but they all charge too much. In fact, they're asking that I pay 70% of my income in rent. What I would like to do is ask each and every one of you to come and just experience our lives for one day to see what we go through. En este momento tengo tres realty para que busque un apartamento. Me tengo que mudar el 30 de este mes y no he podido encontrar. ¿Qué debo hacer? Por favor, pónganse en los zapatos de nosotros. Gracias. So I've been given until the 30th of this month to leave and find a new place, but I can't find anything. What am I supposed to do? Please think about what we're going through. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ivan Romagna and I live at 34 Dutch 47 9 District. Uh, it's owned by A and E. And the reason for what I am here appealing to the board is in behalf of me and in behalf of the elderly. Uh, what happened is that uh, I'm a retiree and three quarters of my rent and the, of my income is going into the rent. And unfortunately, since the Social Security brought up the, the cost of the copays, from 15 to 25, every visit, every visit to one specialist is uh, money that is accumulating. If I had to see four specialists because I have asthma, I have, um, I had to see the cardiologist and I had to be the rheumatologist and also the endocrinologist. Every time that I go to them, is $25 that I had to pay. And it's $100 depending on how often that I had to see them. And, um, well, what happened is that uh, everything is going up, um, but the salaries, uh, the food, the utility bills, uh, everything goes up. Uh, the fare, the transportation, and uh, as a retiree, the salaries stay at the same. So please, I ask you to the panel to I try to stop uh, the landlord, the increase of the rent, because it is not fair that we have worked all our life, and uh, you all who are over there at the panel, we have been working in giving all to the city for at the end of our lives when we need to rest and what we need to live is in peace, that we had to be with the burden, the anxiety, or the depression to see that the landlords are making repairs, making condoms, making condominiums, the buildings, and then uh, trying to evict the seniors. And this is something that, what are we gonna do? Where do we gonna go to live? Another thing is the amount of the rent that they are charging for every apartment that is vacant goes sometimes 500, 600 up. And then what's going on? Our elderly, unfortunately, because I had seen in the supermarket. They Excuse me, your, your time is up. Could you wrap up your presentation, please? Excuse me? Your time is up, so could you conclude your presentation, please? 
So it's finished now or? Yes. You can wrap it up with your final remarks. Okay. So then please uh, try that the, the rent of the logo uh, higher because uh, this is not fair what is going on and this is an inconsideration making, you know, the, tenant, the landlords rich at our expenses. So please uh, take this in consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next three speakers are Charles Gadinsky, Rosalva Quintero, and Ernestine Villafane. Thank you, panel. My name is Charles Gadinsky. I own a 21-unit building in Flushing, Queens. Of the 21 apartments, 11 of my tenants are paying me under $1,000 a month. I've been at the building now for about 26 years. I have a very nice relationship with my tenants. I'm not looking to evict anybody. I can't evict anybody. But at this point, with the guideline increases that we've gotten in the last couple of years, I'm really choked on being able to provide the tenants the services that they need. And right here in my hand, I have a proposal from a facade guy for $118,000 to repair the parapet walls and point the bricks on a building that is almost 100 years old. It's a four-story walk-up. I have tenants on Scree, I have tenants on Dree, I have tenants that get HRA supplements. There are uh, supplements out there for people that need them. None of my tenants ever got evicted. Of course, they don't pay me very much rent, but nonetheless, no one ever got evicted because they couldn't pay the rent. I do have one tenant who I rented to by mistake two years ago who owes me over $7,000, and finally this week in court, I got an eviction for this tenant. But again, he owes me $7,000 and it doesn't help me with running my building when all I have is a piece of paper that says he's gonna be, he's gonna be removed from the apartment. I need at least a 4% increase this year in order to make the repairs that I need. My tenant's biggest fear is not that I'm gonna evict them, it's that I'm not taking care of the building because I do take care of the building. Their biggest fear is that I'm gonna sell the building. And there are a lot of landlords like me in New York City who care about their properties, have a small building, go to work every day, go to their buildings at night, night to make sure everything goes okay. And unless the board can work with us, we have no choice but to sell the buildings to operators. And yes, the operators have alternative motives, co-ops, condominiums, building on air rights, things that we can't do because we don't have the money to do it. So you have to be fair with us. You can't make us accountable. You can't make us a, so you can't make us a social service agency. You have to make it so that we can run our businesses in a fair way, take care of our tenants, and take care of ourselves. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak tonight. Thank you, Mr. Kuzinski. Excuse me. I, I think, Mr. Kuzinski, there's a question. There's a, there's a question. Please. There's a question for Mr. Kuzinski from a member of the panel, please. How many of your units are rent stabilized? All. All of them? How many are there total? 21. Uh, and do you do you break even? How, what is your um, uh, uh, expenses versus your income? Um, right now, I barely break even. I barely break even, and if I, I have to figure out a way to do this facade work right now. And at that point, there's going to be a major loss in the building, and that's one of the reasons I'm thinking about selling it. And do you feel like there should be a different uh, acknowledgement for small landlords uh, who have smaller number of units and who are struggling versus like the bigger landlords that we're hearing about tonight? Yes, there should be. And there used to also be a low rent supplement that we used to get. And I can tell you in over close to 30 years already that I'm in the business. When we got the low rent supplement, I never had a tenant that had to leave because of it. I never had a tenant who called the office and didn't understand it. Most of the tenants, they realized what a, that in order for me to maintain the building, I need this. I have a woman that lives in a three-bedroom apartment. She's paying me about $820 a month. She'd love to move to a smaller apartment. She can't maintain the big apartment, but she can't afford to move to a smaller apartment, so she stays there. I have two one-bedrooms in the building. Eventually, if I get one, I will move her down to it, because first of all, she can't make, it's very hard for her to go to the fourth floor now. And the two one-bedrooms are on the first floor in the lobby, because the way the lobby's configured, the apartments are smaller because that's where the entryway is, and above it, they get the space in their apartments. So you are in agreement with the idea that small property owners should have some kind of different increases in order to be able to maintain their buildings versus these large landlords that we're hearing about tonight? Yes. Thank you. Um, I, I'm sorry, I have a question. Are, are you planning on applying for an MCI increase for the facade work? Um, 
I will apply for an MCI increase for the facade work, but it's, it takes, I think, like 10 or 12 years now to get the money back. It used to be, it, they've increased that. So the, it's a matter of coming up with the money to do it, and you will get, you will get a small increase. But on these kind of rents, you'll get a $10 increase, an $11 increase, a $12 increase. It's really not, it's something that is not gonna really help me at all, really. But, I, but if I don't make the repairs to the building, or I don't sell the building, the building's gonna deteriorate. Have you, have you looked at the HPD programs to help deal with the facade issue? Could they have either loan programs and grant programs available for small property owners like you to help supplement the cost of doing the facade work? You have to have extremely low income tenancy in the building. I have a lower middle class tenancy in the building. I have gone down, I've even gone to round tables that HPD gave at the Brooklyn Law School. And it's, we don't qualify. Yeah, I, I would encourage you to go back because they've created new programs in the last few months and I would encourage you to go back and talk to them because I think there are programs now available for property owners. Yeah, I met the, the old commissioner's assistant, Ms. Miero, she was a very, very nice woman. And I sat down with her about a year and a half ago and there really wasn't anything out there for us. Again, tenement building, four-story walk-up. Right. Again, lower middle income tenants, a couple of tenants who maybe are a little above that because they don't live there as long. They live there four or five years. Yeah, I would say, I, I know definitely it's since the last year and a half there are definitely more programs out there because we right. learn to hear about them all the time. So our GB staff outside or someone can help you connect up with HPD. I was ask if you have a contact person. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Alba, King Carol. I think she needs an interpreter, please. See. Okay. Mi nombre es Rosalba Quintero. Okay. Puedo hablar en inglés primero. Español. No en español. Es solamente hablar en español. Yo me yo me Okay. Mi nombre es Rosalba Quintero. Mi nombre es Rosalba Quintero y vivo en el 3752 39 Street, apartamento 11, Jason High, Nueva York 11372. My name is Rosalba Quintero and I live in 3752 89th Street, apartment 1C. This is in Jackson Heights, New York, 11372. Eh, estoy viviendo en este edificio por 40 años. Desde 1977 hasta esta, esta fecha. Este, mi renta ha, sido, ha estado subiendo, bajando, porque tengo problemas en el apartamento, que hay ratas, ratones y cucarachas. So I've been at this address for 40 years, um, since 1977. And my rent has actually, it's gone up, it's gone down, it's because I've been, I faced a lot of problems in, in this unit. Um, for instance, we have rodents, we have rats, we have cockroaches. Y algunas veces me ha, me ha caído agua del, del techo por la parte de la sala o por la parte de la, de la, del, del, como del baño, el hall de, que dirija el baño. Este, me, me, ha, me ha proporcionado el asma también porque la, la, humed, la humedad que, ha, que hay ahí me molesta y, y mi inco es muy, muy, muy bajito que son mi, mi social es muy bajito de 313 dólares yo estoy pagando una renta de 700 supuestamente 709 dólares pero por lo, todos los problemas que he tenido llegaron a rebajarme a 300 85, 80, casi 390 dólares. Okay. Um, and I, as I said, I have many problems. Um, there are leaks coming from the roof. Sometimes water falls on me. This could be in the living room, also in the bathroom, or in the hallway that leads to the bathroom. This has um, produced a lot of humidity in my apartment, which in turn has led to me getting asthma, or having asthma. Now, I have a very low income. I have Social Security of $313, yet my rent is $709 um, in theory. 
Now it has been reduced uh, um, to around three hundred ninety dollars because dollars because of all these problems I described. Me bajaron la renta. Me han llegado a rebajar esa renta porque yo he estado discutiendo, he estado yo eh, hablando con las personas de de la migración de uh, de donde yo estoy ahora. Me están representando ellos a mí en cómo se llama en, la, en, en el 4701 de la Queens Boulevard que se llama Inmigración Católica ellos me están me han ayudado mucho para poder yo eh, pagar es, es, esta renta pero yo para mí es muy uh, muy problemático porque yo tengo que estar prestando para poder pagar mi renta por lo que yo no tengo un, como un you tengo que estar prestando dinero para pagar la renta now, now um, I have managed to get them to reduce my rent in this way because I, I've, I've sought support and I've gotten support from the Catholic Migration Services. Um, but it's still very difficult for me. Um, in fact, I have to always borrow money so I can make rent. Aparte de esto, me toca pagar luz, gas, teléfono, y yo no me alcanza el dinero para yo pagar las cosas. Y soy sola, no tengo a nadie que me ayude. And on top of this, I have to pay my bills, uh, light, um, gas, uh, the telephone bill, um, and it's, it's too much, and I live alone. I don't have anyone else supporting me. Eso es todo lo que quiero decir, pero yo quisiera que ustedes te pongan la mano en su corazón y piensen que en todos los que estamos viviendo, que estamos retirados ya, que vivimos de un CES escrito, no tenemos para pagar todos los gastos que requiere un apartamento. This is all I have to say, but the last thing I ask that you place your hand on your heart and you think about what we're going through, those of us who are on Social Security, who have low incomes, who simply don't have enough to pay rent. Thank you. Ernestine Villafane. Sí, sí, sí. Buenas noches, good evening to everybody. Good evening. I'm Ernestina Belafein, I live in Jackson Heights. La razón que estoy aquí es porque nos siguen subiendo las rentas. Yo vivo con mi esposo y nuestras entradas son, no son suficientes para pagar todos los gastos que tenemos. The reason I'm here is because they keep raising our rents. I live with my husband, but our income is not enough to cover all of our expenses. Tenemos que pagar el arriendo, medicinas y alimentos. A veces no nos, sen, no, nos sentimos que no, no, no es, nos es muy difícil pagar nuestra renta. Por eso estamos todos aquí, presentes, para dejarles saber a ustedes que somos familias pobres, que no tenemos dinero. Vivimos lo que ustedes hemos trabajado toda una vida. Um, and so the expenses we, in, uh, we have to pay include rent, medication, and food. But very often we feel like we just don't have enough to be able to pay rent. And that's why we're here, present today. Because we are working but poor families. Para que ustedes sepan cuáles son los motivos de todos nosotros que hemos trabajado tantos años para tener un retiro tranquilo. We want you to know that we've worked all these years, worked so hard all these years to try to be able to get a decent pension and a decent retirement. Pero resulta que ahora no podemos disfrutar nuestro retiro. ¿Por qué? Porque nos, nos siguen subiendo la renta y no podemos ya como, tener nada suficiente dinero para ni siquiera casi coger el tren. But it turns out that we can't even enjoy our retirement. Why? Because they keep raising our rent. Sometimes we don't even have enough money to take the train. Señores representantes de los inquilinos aquí, pónganse la mano en sus corazones. Y defiéndanos de los dueños. So the members here who represent um, tenants, please place your hand on your heart 
and defend us from the landlords. defender. Nosotros necesitamos la, la necesitamos que ustedes se pongan las manos en sus corazones y vivan un día de pobreza como la tenemos que vivir nosotros. Gracias. We are the tenants that you must defend. And again, we ask that you place your hand on your heart and just live one day the way we experience it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The next three speakers. Espero que nuestras súplicas sean escuchadas por todos aquí. No solamente por los que estamos aquí, sino en todo Nueva York. Necesitamos que nos ayuden, que la renta sea es, está establecida para nosotros que no tenemos salarios, sino un seguro social para vivir. That you hear our demands, and not just for us, but for every all the people in New York um, that don't have enough, don't have enough income to pay the rent. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. The next three speakers are Carmen Rodriguez, Yolanda Martinez, and Basilio Garcia. Carmen Rodriguez. Yeah, I need to translate. Good evening. Buenas noches. Soy Carmen Rodríguez. Vengo del 162-2089 Avenida. So, good evening. I'm, I'm, okay. Disculpe. Good evening. I'm, I'm Carmen Rodríguez. I come from 162-20 of 89th Avenue. Ah, tengo 30, voy a tener 37 años viviendo donde estoy. Ah, no quisiera que la renta esté subiendo más, porque nosotros los pobres no sabemos dónde vamos a terminar. Vamos a terminar en la calle, homeless. And I've been living at this location for almost 37 years now. Now, frankly, I don't want rents to keep going up. Because us, you know, poor families, we don't know where we'll end up. It seems like we're going to end up on the streets homeless. Vivo del seguro social. Un hijo mío vive conmigo y es por ahora que me está ayudando con la renta. Pero es demasiado que se acuerden que nosotros somos pobres, necesitados. So I live off of Social Security, and I have one son who lives with me who helps me out with rent. Um, but please understand that rent is, is too much. We are poor. We can't afford it. This is too, uh, esto es demasiado. Por favor, traten de hacer algo por los pobres, por nuestra gente pobre. It's really too much. Please try to do something for the poor people, for our poor families. Okay. Gracias. Thank you. <laughs> También eh, necesito una llave para poder entrar al edificio porque cambiaron la laca de la entrada del edificio y solamente se le dio una llave por persona. Necesito una llave para entrar al edificio porque me dieron una llave y esa llave la usa el hijo mío porque tiene que salir a trabajar. Oh, and there, there's one more thing. Also, I need a key to get into my building because they recently changed the lock, but they only gave us one key per unit. And I had to give that key to my son because he goes out to work, but I need a key myself to get into the building. Gracias. Buenas noches. Thank you. Your 
Giovanni Martinez. Yolanda Martinez. Okay. Basilio Garcia. I think Yolanda is coming. Ah, all right. Hey, Yolanda. All right. Lo que yo quiero es, es decir que allá en mi apartamento. Ah, ah aquí no sí. Sí, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Yolanda Martínez. Yo soy de la 3726, la 65 de ti. Y en mi apartamento están en mi vida, que son dos de que hay al mismo lado, lado están haciendo muchas cosas que no deben de hacer y uno llama y le da complen para que vayan y le arreglen a uno y ellos no quieren hacerle nada Por... So, uh, good evening, my name is Yolanda Martinez I live in 3726 of 65th Street uh, and, and my building has two entrances, it's two sides and right now they're doing many things in our building that they shouldn't be doing and I often call to complain and asking them to fix these things but they never do. Yo tuve un problema con el mi apartamento con el piso y ellos trataba yo trataba de que ellos fueran a arreglármelo y ellos no querían hacerme nada, pero yo sí logré de que lo arreglaran, pero ahora siempre con el mismo problema es la pared que se me todo se humedece y ellos no me hacen no quieren hacerme nada con la pared, porque la pared es una pintura que le ponen que en todo en el verano se humedece y en el invierno también. And, um, I have many problems in my apartment. Um, one of the problems I had was with the floor and I asked them repeatedly to repair this and of course they refused, they never wanted to. Now I finally got them to do the repairs that are necessary but there's always something else. Right now the issue I'm having is with the walls. The walls um, uh, accumulate humidity, they get filled with humidity um, and because of the type of paint they use, especially in the summertime, and they're not doing anything about it. Y además, eh, también ellos han puesto cámara, pero ellos no le han dicho a ninguno de los inquilinos que están poniendo cámara, y la cámara es todo lo que están poniendo, se lo están cobrando para cobrárselo a uno. Le mandan a los inquilinos, le están mandando cartas, mandan a decir que le van a cobrar 25 dólares por, por cada, a, a cada inquilino. Y también el... La bola que le han puesto automática, también por todo eso le están cobrando a uno. Todo lo que están haciendo, arreglando, pero adentro no arreglan nada, solo por fuera y no, y también todo lo que están haciendo es cobrándole a uno, a los inquilinos. Um, now, also, they recently installed cameras, but of course they didn't inform any of us that they were going to do so. Um, and all they've been doing since then is sending us letters trying to charge us additional amounts for the cameras. They're trying to charge us $25 um, per tenant for the, these cameras. On top of that, they've recently installed an automatic boiler and they've been charging for that. But all of the repairs they do are um, ex ex exterior repairs, but they don't do anything to repair the apartments inside. Y que ellos le da, uno le da complaint y ellos no le hacen caso a uno, pero entonces yo no sé por qué, y ellos todo lo que quieren nada más que uno le esté para, aumentando la renta, y eso es lo que nosotros no queremos, que no estén, sigan aumentando renta. Now, you know, we complain all the time, but they don't do much about it. The only thing they want to do is just increase our rent, and this is what we don't want. We don't want rents to keep going up. Thank you. Thank you. Basilio Garcia. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. My name is Basilio Garcia. I am tenant living at 9637 Avenue, Corona, Queens. And I have been living in this building for 35 years. I'm here in front of you all to request roll back in rent 
for rent regular apartments for this income I have to use is to, um, I'm sorry, uh, for road back event in the, this year. I am a retired person and most of my income I have to use it to pay my rent. Sometimes I have to decide between getting food on the table for my family or pay my rent. If you, if you decide to increase the rent, you will deplore even more the quality life of thousands of families like mine. I'm sure that Lalo will not suffer. If you decide not to increase the rent, because they will always make profit no matter what. Please, don't increase the rent. Don't make the housing crisis worse than what is now. Do not make more homeless people, hardworking people like us, to stay in our home with our family. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. If you haven't signed up to speak and you want to speak, you need to sign up before 8.30, so that's about 10 minutes from now. Um, so anyone who signs up before 8.30, you will have an opportunity to speak, but you must sign up before 8.30. Eh, si quieren dar su testimonio, lo pueden hacer, pero tienen que apuntarse. Eh, afuera en la mesa, pero tiene que ser antes de las ocho y media. Pero todos los que se apunten antes de las ocho y media van a tener la oportunidad de dar su testimonio. Can I also announce that anyone who wants to sign up about getting future information about these hearings, they can go at the back desk and the our guidelines board staff should help you sign up so you can get email announcements of all future hearings. I encourage people to be able to do that so they can get information directly from the rank guidelines board. Y otra vez se anuncia que para los que quieran recibir anuncios eh, eh, sobre la siguiente eh, eh, audiencia pública ¿no? de, de la Junta Reguladora, también pueden eh, apuntarse en la mesa de entrada para que reciban por correo electrónico directamente de la Junta los anuncios de las próximas audiencias. Thank you. The next three speakers will be Ramona Rodriguez, Hoover Osorio, and Francisca Santa Maria. Ramona Rodriguez. I have Ramona, but if it's Ramon, come up. Oh, that's an E? Okay. Ramona. Ramon Rodriguez or Ramona Rodriguez? Ramon, ¿usted es Ramon? A ver, ¿hay un Ramon o una Ramona Rodríguez? No, ok. Hoover Osorio. Hoover Osorio. Good evening. Mi nombre es Uber Osorio, vivo 3730 de la 34 Street, Jackson Heights. En ese edificio yo viviendo 33 años. Estoy aquí para tratar si me reducen la renta, ya que hace 10 años estoy retirado. El Social Security paga muy poco. El social, los sueldos del Social Security siempre se mantienen frisados. Si estoy de suerte cada dos o tres años, me aumentan un dólar. En... Um, good evening, my name is Uber Osorio. I live in 3730 34th Street in Jackson Heights. I've been in my building for 33 years. I'm here tonight to ask that you actually decrease my rent. My income is very low. In fact, I depend on Social Security. And the Social Security checks I get are very little and they never go up. Over the last few years, they've gone up maybe a dollar or two. En cambio, la renta, año tras año, aumentan o me la aumentan. ¿Y qué están esperando? Que viva yo en la calle y muera de hambre o de frío por falta de ropa o medicinas. Muchas gracias. Um, 
contrast, my rent goes up year after year. And I ask, what are people waiting for? Uh, are you waiting for me to have to go and live on the street and die because of lack of clothing or lack of food? Thank you. Thank you. Francisca Santa Maria. I am. Well, my name is Francisca Santa Maria. I, I am over here for the reason that I am senior sen. My, my income is very low. I, I need an apartment on my floor. I talk with the Lola, and now it's up to me that I have to pay the triple or the rent if I get an apartment on the main floor. So, my situation is, is very, very bad. I need a bad. I told him twice. He said no because I have to pay triple. This is my complaint. Thank you so much. Well, let's get the interpretation, please. No, I said my complaint. Well, can you get the interpretation? That was in English. All right. Sorry. I can interpret into Spanish if it may be. I'm sorry. I blanked out. Maria, um, let's see. The next three speakers are Maria Sanchez, Andrea Perez, and Jose Janal. Maria Sanchez. Maria Sanchez. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Maria Sanchez. I want to speak uh, in Spanish. It's better for me. That's fine. Yo, Thank you. Yo tengo una renta de $1,500 dólares y yo soy uh, seniors y necesito uh, saber cómo yo puedo controlar mi renta porque vivo en un apartamento uh, de casa privada. So my name is Maria Sanchez. Uh, my rent is $1,500 and I'm a senior. And what I need to know is how I can control my rent and the rent increases because I actually live in a unit in a private house. Eh, muchas veces tengo muchos problemas con la rata, cucaracha, de todo. Eh, ¿Cómo se dice? Centopía. Uh -huh. Centipede, all the okay, todos los bichos que hay en la afuera te pica y, me, y pica a nosotros y nos infecta. El ando no quiere hacer absolutamente nada, pero cada año me sube la renta 30 dólares. So in, in my apartment we have many problems. We have vermin, we have rats, we have roaches little crawlers like centipedes, all kinds of insects that come from outside and they sting us. Uh, now the landlord doesn't want to do anything about it. And the only thing he wants to do is keep increasing our rent. He increases our rent about 30 years or so each year. So uh, $30 or so that's each it. year. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for attention. <laughs> There's a question, just a moment. Yeah, I just wanted to answer your question. It's just a procedural response to a super good The law in New York is very mal for the university in New York is a menos de seis apartamentos. No tiene derechos. It's a problem in all the states of New York. So it's possible to talk with personas in the government to change the law. It's more important to change the law in the government. Okay. 
So I'm just saying it's really, for people who are living in buildings that have less than six units, there are, there are real no protections. And it's fortunate because New York can pass laws to improve the rights of tenants in those buildings, but they don't. And we really need to ask our government to change the laws to protect tenants just like you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Andrea Perez. Sí, buenas noches. Mi nombre es Andrea Pérez. Gracias por darme este momento. Eh, yo estoy acá porque este, yo vivo en una casa privada, ¿verdad? Y el dueño está abusando mucho. Él cada que puede, pues habla, habla feo, nos humilla y no nos, no nos deja ahí tranquilos por los niños, ¿verdad? Y eso es lo que yo digo, si los niños son el futuro del mundo, ¿por qué cerrarles las puertas? Eh, él no, donde quiera no quieren niños yo tengo tres y son niños excelentes y nadie los quiere eso digo entonces qué va a hacer de este mundo sin niños eh, también este sí claro um, so good evening my name is Andrea Perez and thank you for giving me this opportunity um, I also live in a private house or privately owned house the problem I have um, with my landlord he's constantly yelling constantly yelling at us I'm getting on our case because of my children. Um, and then I ask if the children are, are the future or our future, why are our doors always being shut on us because of them? Um, and I feel that um, nobody wants us because of our children. We get discriminated against because of the children. Eh, ayer llega, llega, este, llega el señor de pretexto, ¿no? De que por tantos niños va, este, va a subir 100 dólares de renta. Y yo me pregunto, o sea, o les compro ropa o sus zapatitos, porque a cada rato cambian de, de, de size, ¿verdad? O pago la renta. O sea, ¿qué, ¿qué puedo hacer? ¿Cómo vivir? Tengo que pedir a welfare, yo no quiero eso. Si sí, yo quiero pagar yo mis gastos, pero es imposible con estos incrementos en la renta. Gracias. And he's always harassing us, threatening us, threatening to charge us a hundred extra dollars per child in rent. So I asked, what am I supposed to do? Do I pay rent or do I pay for the clothing, the shoes of my children? And you know, they're growing and so I always have to buy them new clothes and shoes. So my question is, what, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to be able to survive? Thank you. Thank you. I just want to just give advice to tenants just in those situations. In New York, it's against the law to discriminate against a family because of family composition, whether you have children or not. It's against the law to discriminate against about the source of income. So it's really important that people understand that there are laws that are in place, but unless you to let you act on it, no one will know. And that's the hardest thing, to be able to stand up and stand up for these issues. So it's really important that you come and testify and tell us about this, but there are agencies like the City Commission on Human Rights and other places where you can go to talk to you government about, about these problems, and I know the Rank Islands Board staff out front can give you information on the City Commission, but I really encourage tenants to be able to do this at risk to yourself, but it's really important to be able to stand up for what you believe in. Okay, if I wanted to give you some recommendations to the families that are here, the inquilinos, it's against the law in New York to discriminate en contra de los inquilinos por la, la estructura o la composición de la familia, eh, por ejemplo, por tener hijos, ¿no? Eh, tienen que eh, informarse de estas leyes, eh, y si no, porque si no están informados no hay nada que se pueda hacer. Entonces yo les recomiendo que acudan a las agencias públicas, por ejemplo, las agencias de derechos humanos, también pueden pedir la información sobre estos asuntos eh, al personal de, de la Junta Reguladora que está afuera. Tienen que informarse y hacer valer sus derechos, aunque a veces es un riesgo eh, personal. Jose, you know? Good evening. Good evening, hi. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to uh, listen to us. Uh, my name is Jose Janel. Um, I've lived in Elmhurst, Queens since 19, my family and I have lived there since 1978. 
Um, to say that it has changed is to make an understatement. Um, rents have gone extremely high. The quality of living has dropped quite a bit. A building that was uh, beautiful with furniture downstairs has become a building where sometimes you see graffiti, uh, where there's garbage left all the time, and uh, destruction. We have, um, in my building, I'm a, I'm a tenant leader with uh, Catholic Migration Services, so I listen to a lot of stories uh, around my building and around my neighborhood. Um, and because of that, I'm privy to a lot of the things that have been going on. Some of that is that a large portion of people with these two zero percents did not get that zero percent, simply because of MCIs. My building alone, no one, not one person is not paying a dime more than they were two years ago. Some had already signed a two-year lease before we did the first zero. And then when the next one came along, we have MCIs. I myself have to pay an extra $68 um, just because of MCIs. Um, we have tried everything we can um, to fight this, and yeah, we've gotten the zero percents. We have never gotten a rollback, and that's something I think we do need. 54% um, of, the, of, of New Yorkers are currently uh, paying more than 30% of, of their income in rent. That's a large portion. 50% of the country is doing it. We're 54%. New York is the 83rd city that's most costly to live in out of 100. Okay, major metropolis, we're 83rd. That's nothing to be proud of. I remember the neighborhoods of Corona, Elmhurst, Flushing, Jackson Heights. Nice little mom and pop stores. All this is getting gentrified. And with that coming, is coming a large amount of cost. I do feel for the small landlords, and yeah, I agree. They should come up with some laws to help them. Because we're lumping them together with millionaires and billionaires. These guys who own these buildings have a lot of money and we're just stock in numbers, okay? So please, consider that when you're considering this rent increase. Okay, the next three speakers. The next three speakers will be Shea, um, I guess it's Colon, um, Leslie Cruz, and Alejandro Santiago. Shea Colon. Colon? I'm sorry, I can't read this. Good evening, distinguished members of the RGB board. My name is Shay, and I am a tenant leader representing Catholic Migration Services. I'm 30 years old, and I'm a Queens resident living in Woodside. A roof over your head is the most basic and essential part of living. Major landlords in New York City have taken advantage of this basic human need and have turned it into a business that solely focuses on bottom line profits while overlooking humane moral and ethical rights while jeopardizing the futures of many families. Over the Bloomberg administration years, rents dramatically increase, so much that most families in New York City are now scraping wages to just to make ends meet and pay their rent, even at the expense of their health and the ability to make purchase, uh, vital purchases and necessities. Meanwhile, landlords and management companies continue to benefit from these increases by greedily deliver, deliver being, delivering sorry, favorable ROI metrics to their respective stakeholders. I currently live in a rent-stabilized apartment under a preferential lease where I pay $19.50 a month and my legal rent is $3,200 a month. As a working class citizen with two jobs, I live very anxious when my lease is up for renewal due to the fear that my preferential rent could be revoked and I could be on the hook to either pay full legal rent or move out. As a member of the hardworking community that we all live in, I'd like to demand justice, equality, and basic human rights, especially housing rights, to be protected and respected. I hope you will all listen to our outcry today and make the right decision by implementing either a rent freeze or a rent rollback so that way all tenants can receive the financial relief that we all deserve. Thank you. Yeah.
I'm um, nine years old, and I'm here because um, because um, the owner from our house is um, um, his name is Andrew, and we pay um nineteen um hundred dollars, and there's um, mice and cockroaches and all of the worms, and every time we come from our house, we leave our house, and then we come back. They're all over the place. They're in the fridge, they're in the table, they're in our food, they're everywhere. And, we will, and when we want to sleep, um, sometimes we all, also find cockroaches um, going all over the roof um, floor. And um, also because when, we're, um, when we um, repair um, the owner, um, we pay um, $1,900, and now he wants to, um, to make us pay two thousand dollars and we're worried about that because sometimes we are hungry and sometimes um we're hungry but there's a lot of food to eat because um my dad he we want to spend time with him but we can't really spend time with him because he leaves to work at four o'clock in the morning and sometimes and he comes at two o'clock and sometimes we because um, people don't come um, to his work, he has to work at until four, five o'clock, and he also works Sundays. Thank you. Thank you. Alejandro Santiago. I just want, Jessica, I just, on behalf of all of New York, I just want to thank you for being able to come up in front of us all at nine years old and talk about your life and your story. I am inspired by you, and I want to thank you for all of us because you represent with the good and the future of New York. Hi, good evening. My name is Alejandro Santiago. Could you speak a little louder and closer to the mic? Okay. My name is Alejandro Santiago, and I live on 150 or 788 Avenue, and my apartment building is owned by Zara. And um, honestly, I'm going to keep this simple. There are kids here, and kids like her shouldn't have to come here and deal with adult issues. They should be out playing. They should be out growing. They should be out learning. But they're not doing that because this is the issues that we're facing in this economy. We live in a generation where money is placed on a higher pedestal than people, and that's not how this world is supposed to work, okay? I'm not speaking, I'm not speaking just for me. I'm standing up for everybody in this room because we're wasting, it feels like we have to come here and give up our time to fight for something that you know that is right. You know that increasing rent is crazy, it's bull crap. But you still want it done, and I'm not sure the reason why every time when something economic happens, we end up taking a fall for it. Uh, overpriced on foods, transportation, rent. This is where our money goes. Mind you, some of us work 8, 16 hours. I work a crazy amount of hours. Sometimes I don't go home. I come back home two days later after working. Why should we work 30 to 40 hours and still live in poverty? We shouldn't be living in poverty. We should be able to build a better future for our kids. And we're not doing that because our money is being thrown away on apartments in which we're hardly even living in because we're out working, we're out running errands, we're out dealing with uh, medical bills and, and, and issues and family issues. So, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell you to find it in your heart. You're adults. You know what's right. Yeah. Thank you. The next three speakers are Sandra Hidalgo, Robin Woodmans, and Robert Garcia. Sandra Hidalgo. Hi, 
Muy buenas noches, damas y caballeros. Gracias a todos. Let's wait for the interpreter. Thank you. Quién? No, yo no yo fui a hablar en español. Okay. Muy buenas noches, damas y caballeros. Gracias por su tiempo. Eh, yo resido en Elmos en el 8340 de Britton Avenue. Mi edificio estuvo hace siete años atrás bajo el nombre de la compañía Vantage, con la cual tuvimos muchísimos problemas. Me vi en la obligación de formar un board, un board tenant association en my building para representar a los míos, sobre todo a las personas de tercera edad como yo, los cuales son las víctimas de los grandes tiburones, como los llamo yo, los landos. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for giving me some of your time. I live at 8340 Brixton. Britain. Britain, excuse me, in Elmhurst. Um, six years ago, uh, my building was owned by Vantage. The landlord's name was Vantage. Now, we had many problems um, with them. And so I saw myself in the position where I had to organize a tenants association to represent my people. Many of us are senior citizens. And so I got us organized to defend, um, to defend the tenants from the people that I call sharks, the landlords. Sí, desafortunadamente los más afectados son las personas de tercera edad, me incluyo mi persona. Tuve la suerte de conocer a la organización eh, Catholic Charity Service, lo cual, los cuales nos ayudaron muchísimo para defender las viviendas de las personas mayores, pero muchos de ellos que no conocían sus derechos se tuvieron que ir. No es justo, estamos acá y espero que ustedes como representantes de nuestras quejas les haga saber al, al señor Di Blasio que tiene que tener consideración para que pare el incremento de las rentas. Hay gente que vive de un social security que no les alcanza ni para pagar la renta, ni para pagar sus biles, ni para pagar su comida. No creo que ustedes que están ahí sentados quieran ver a todo el mundo tirados en la calle. Como hoy por hoy hay gente joven, gente joven que tiene que trabajar 14, 15 horas y compartir un estudio o un apartamento de dos cuartos entre 8 o 10 personas. Eso no es justo. I'll do my best here. Um, and as you know, unfortunately, um, it's the elderly who are often the most affected by these issues. Now, I was fortunate enough to um, meet and, and find the people, the good people from Catholic Migration Services, and they've helped us to defend our housing. But there are many people who didn't get a chance to get informed, and they actually lost their housing. So I'm here to ask you, to please tell Mr. de Blasio that he must limit the rent increases um, because Social Security is not enough to pay for everything we need to pay for, all the, our rent, our food, and our, our bills. Um, I, there was something about a, a um, warning against the consequences where people will, have, will find themselves living, living on the street and also a description of the way young people are forced to team up and live many people under one roof in a small one bedroom or a studio apartment because it's the only way they can afford rent. Thank you very much. Thank you.